<laughs> What's up guys, Nick Rapazzi here. Welcome to the Paradise C6 YouTube channel. So today we're gonna to be working on both of these motors. We have to prep them so that one can get built. We need to get the crank out of this, get the accessories off of this. And while we're, we're here, I wanna just go over and talk to you guys about exactly what happened and why this happened to three of the pistons here and this one right here. So a lot of people were saying that it was tuner's fault and all this other stuff. And I did put a safe tune on it and it really just comes down to clearances. When it comes to an NA motor, the rings are gapped to a certain, I, mean, I don't know exactly what they're gapped to, but they're gapped to get the minimal amount of blow by and seal the motor as tight as possible for an NA application. And now when you go and add boost, such as a turbocharger or supercharger, you're adding heat because you're getting a, more air, more fuel, and a bigger bang. And what happens with the clearances is their clearance for expansion on an NA uh, motor, that's what this was. And then when I boosted it, they weren't clearance for that. And I probably should have pulled the pistons out, clearance the, uh, all the rings in it, and then put it back together, but I, Figured the low boost and everything that we were doing was going to be safe for it. Clearly it wasn't because we popped three pistons in it. And what happens is, um, best way to put it, you got a pinch point. And when, with that pinch point, it's one of them will overlap each other. And that's what pops the piston. So basically you have, let me show you on a smaller scale. Say that's the ring gap right there. And then what happens when it gets too hot and overheats, the ring gap jumps on each other and that's what popped the piston up. And that's what happened to three of these pistons. So when we get this rebuilt with the new pistons, they're gonna have stronger um, tops to them and they're gonna be gapped for boost. So this way this doesn't happen again because when this did happen, I was driving around for a couple hours and beating the hell out of it. So I know I was way over abusing the motor for what we had here. And that's why we're gonna rebuild it and do it a 5.3 and uh, take all the parts that we need out of here. So I'm gonna pull everything off that I need. Main focus on this block is we gotta get the crank out. And once we got the crank out, I need to pull the heads off of that. I think I'm gonna, just to make it easier for the machine shop, just to give them less work and they don't charge me more money. I'm going to pull the pistons, the crank, everything out of that and just basically give them an empty block with the crank the pistons and rods that we have in the house and everything will be good to go. So basically I'll do two full engine teardowns, get these apart and uh, put them on the truck so I can deliver them to John tomorrow so he can get to the machine shop for me, which they said they can get it done in two weeks. So super excited. I really want to drive this car again. I cannot wait. So we got to get the uh, camshaft and the crank out of this, get that torn apart so it's just a bare block and it's ready for them. And uh, yeah, so we got a lot of work ahead of us. So let's get it done. Where do we go from? Where do we go from here? No one can save us, save us from keeping clean. I don't wanna lose you, I don't wanna lose you now. Cause there is only one thing, only one Before you turn around and walk away Hey, hey, hey I just wanna see you on my new grave Alright guys, so looking over everything that we took out, all the rods look fine, none of them are bent or anything like that, but as you can see, this one, it, the one that was totally destroyed, the piston ring actually broke in a couple spots, and here's part of it. So it's a clear reason why this happened, these were too tight, and they broke. 
it uh it actually did a lot more damage to the piston than i thought initially don't know if it's going to show up on camera because gopro's not really good about zooming in but right there there's a crack all the way through the piston um there was another one like right over here that's cracked through the piston and it just totally annihilated it and for the most part the rings held up together perfectly fine on the other pistons that cracked but it still bunched up the piston gap this is the ring gap that i was telling you guys about now that it is out of the piston you can see how big it is but when it is inside the cylinder walls these are pretty much almost touching to the naked eye so you can barely tell that there's a gap in between and that was what i was talking about that jumps up this piece right here this edge right here jumps up on top of that cracks the piston and then sends piston through your engine so yeah super happy that these are out i still have to get the camshaft out and then we'll start working on the crank but uh let me clean this stuff up get this stuff out of the way and then we'll get the cam out and then we'll work on getting the crankshaft out and then uh we can start disassembling that motor and doing the same whole process all over again so let me get this stuff cleaned up <laughs> So the block is completely empty. We got the crank out. We got what we need. I tried to keep the caps in the same place, but honestly, I just just took them apart, let them fall wherever. It doesn't really matter. The block is pretty much useless unless we go to get this re-sleeved, and it's going to get a line hone anyway if that happens anyway for uh, main studs. So I'm just going to save this. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to get it re-sleeved or not, or if I'll just get another block that but i am going to save it there's no reason to throw it out it could just sit in a corner and be a, a garage ornament for now maybe i'll turn it into a table or something but i'm going to do the same thing to the other motor i'm not going to film any of it because basically i'm just pulling the bottom end out pulling the pistons out because we're not using any of it it's getting all new stuff pulling the heads off taking the rockers off the valley cover and just pulling everything out of this it's kind of nice that the the front balancer isn't on it anymore because as you guys saw in one of the videos this was a bitch to get the balancer off it probably took me 35 minutes just to get it off just because i didn't have the right tool we snapped the bolt in it and whatever we got it all fixed but that's all done i'm happy it's done this one should probably take me about an hour because i really don't care about any of the internals they're not any good to me they are uh fourth gen rods and pistons so i'm going to try to save them and keep the caps with what they go because somebody could use them that wants to boost do a boosted application um they just are a lot stronger than the gen uh threes the earlier models but um yeah so i'm gonna end it there i hope you guys enjoyed this video i uh, hope it was a little bit informative and i cannot wait to get the motor back and show you guys put it me putting it back together and basically showing you how we do a cam swap in an ls fully uh doing the head gaskets and everything so i do have everything head gaskets are over there i i am going to get a full gasket kit so we can put all brand new gaskets because like i said i want this to be a brand new motor i don't want to deal with any leaks i don't want it to 
have anything go wrong with it. All the stuff that we bought are 1200 horsepower rated and we're gonna shoot for like 8, 850 and eventually go for that four digit number and see if it'll hold up. But I think 8, 850 will be good for the streets. So yeah, I'm just gonna end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, throw them in the comment section below and I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.